So, as Gamergate 2 continues to rage on, things are bound to get personal eventually, especially when you consider that the enemy of the gamers is an organized cabal, a network of underqualified activist trash, who have no interest in gaming whatsoever besides how they can bend the industry to the designs of an anti-human globalist Marxist agenda of centralized authority masquerading as concern for marginalized voices. Yes, we all know what it really is about. While most of us conduct ourselves in a manner that could be considered, I suppose, gentlemanly battlefield conduct in this cultural information war, knowing full well that there are lines we must never cross, such as doxing involving people's families, etc., the radical leftists have no such constitution. They will lie, they will harass, attack you personally, they'll go after your family, they'll false flag, claim victimhood, they'll go after your privacy, your address, your livelihoods, they'll threaten violence, they'll threaten legal action, and then they'll turn around and they'll claim that we're the ones, the gamers who are guilty of lies, harassment, personal attacks, doxing, and, of course, much worse. Anything to protect their perception of themselves as the good guys in everything as they delve ever deeper, ironically, into what we can only classify as reprehensible conduct. The reason? Simple. There are far more of us than there are of them. They are starting to realize it. They have noticed that they are cornered, and they've seen us gaining several victories now over the last few months. That calling us racists and sexists will not stop. They cannot actually win by just calling us names anymore, as I've been saying for months. This isn't Gamergate, this is the sequel. We're bigger, we're badder, we're better. Anyway, the latest in the stream of completely and utterly unforgivable behaviour from their side has been pouring out of a pathetic little worm of a man called Nick Calandra, who decided after failing for two months to successfully find any dirt on Grums and then getting tricked by Grums into publishing a fake story, thereby discrediting himself and outing himself as the kind of hateful, reeing rat who will publish anything against his political opponents. He just turned around and decided that he would simply get his people to dox Grums, then deny any accountability. Pretty textbook for the left. Can't let them find out that you're not actually salt of the earth, but you are in fact salted earth. Next, though, he went after Smash JT, a very nice guy with a very good website who's been making some noise lately with this website, SmashJT.com, that seeks to target one of the festering pod sacks of absolute malice and hatred of reality, Kotaku, the alleged gaming website that is entirely, entirely possessed by activism. Obviously, Nick the Fink couldn't handle that, and so he launched a false flag campaign of targeted harassment. Yeah, actual targeted harassment to get the site shut down. And sadly, he succeeded. However, as I pointed out, there are more of us. And as it turns out, it's very difficult to make things stick when facts and evidence can be very easily presented to the powerful ones. And so it looks like we have a happy ending after all, at least for this chapter. So let's go in and preserve all of this for future evidence for later when they once again try to call us a targeted harassment campaign. Hello, welcome back to Will of the Fans. My name's Will. See what I did there? Hope you're having a lovely, lovely day. Boy, that was a long intro, but there is a lot to cover as this saga goes on and on and on and on. Well, we have to deal with the situation of SmashJT.com, its closure, and no spoilers, we'll see how it develops. But also, people need to be aware of this guy, Nick Calandra, because he is a piece of garbage as a human being. He is the kind of person who will smile to your face while getting someone to stab you in the back. He is exactly that kind of person, and we will see as we proceed what kind of person he really is when the mask was wrenched off his face freaking chipmunk face by Grums. So if you're liking the video, like the video, be kind, hit like, it helps other people find it in the algorithm, and don't forget to subscribe to Will of the Fans if you'd like more news, reviews, commentary, and rebellion, courtesy of me, the Grift Force, the Legion Reactionaire, and the Willies and Fannies. <laughs> That's right. Okay, also, be sure to join my Discord, link in description. We are developing it into quite the happy little community, and you will find plenty of like-minded people there to have the old-fashioned kinds of debates with about fandom in general. That would be the point of all of this. This 
wretched face on my screen right now, I'm sorry to be showing you it, is the face of a man named Nick Calandra. This guy used to work for The Escapist until he was fired, at which point he started up another little organisation called Second Wind, which... Whatever, really, you know? This guy has his own Discord. He has a load of people who are working on it uh, for him, basically, after paying to join and support him. God knows why. As you will find out, this guy is trash incarnate. And unlike Alyssa Macante, who currently has managed to turn herself into a meme, this guy is making some pretty egregious threats. His uh, Twitter account, of course, is at NickJCal. Um, I would be able to show you a bit more of it, but unfortunately, the little worm has blocked me. So, oh well. Although, actually, if you go to his account, he's already protected it. So, you can't see anything he's done anyway. Because, of course, nothing says you stand by your convictions like protecting your Twitter account. Fucking coward. Anyway, let's have a quick history lesson before we go in for the victory lap. This video could get... Yeah, it might get quite long. So uh, here's Gigabear, uh, one of Grums' biggest backers, who was instrumental in a campaign where uh, basically Nick Calandra was doing ev absolutely everything he could possibly do to dig up as much dirt on Grums as he could. He was harassing Gigabear, he was harassing Grums, he was sending people to try and find any kind of untoward behavior surrounding the crowdfunding of Grums' video game Ember. Unfortunately, couldn't find anything, which was when Grums and Gigabear decided to present Nick with an anonymous email of a story where someone posing as a alt account for Grums, calling themselves Rusty Nail, decided uh, to have a bit of a go at Gigabear for not donating enough, not doing enough, and trying to put pressure on him. Of course, then we saw that Nick J. Cal decided that he would in fact, uh, publish this, despite claiming he needed to verify it first, he did not. He ran with the story, and he fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. Rusty Nail, as of course we found out later, is an anagram of urinalist, which of course we still have the quartering to thank for in terms of to uh, terminology. Anyway, uh, things went on from there, and uh, Smash JT, of course, came up with his list. It is the List Wars, of course. His list of Kotaku employees. Now, uh, Smash JT has long been crusading to remove the internet of the wretched influence of Kotaku, the activist trash bag website posing as games journalism, and staffed almost entirely by ideologically driven zealots like Alyssa Macante and various other awful people. Basically, they have ties to everyone from Sweet Baby Inc. to Alyssa, uh, sorry, Anita Sarkeesian. And really, it's time for them to go off into the sunset and just bugger off, because they really are the worst. So Smash JT is trying to do something about this. He made a list of Kotaku employees, former Kotaku employees, and their friends, and listed every single thing they've done that's anti-gamer and anti-customer and anti-human and anti-white. Fair enough. Nothing wrong with that, especially if all you're doing is drawing information from their own About Us page or their Twitter bios. Things that people put up on the internet for public dissemination. Things that are in no way private. No more private than me showing my face on this video that I will later publish to YouTube for your viewing consideration. Smash JT, of course, is the discussion here of Nick Calandra, who you can see, uh, as was rightly pointed out to me, he says he was refusing to take down the page and continue to add more names to it. So it seemed that Nick was talking to JT and said he had replied to him, uh, thanked him for reaching out and taking him off the list. That is exactly what Smash JT said to me last night on WTF Live when he appeared at the end of the stream for the final sort of 45 minutes or so to go over the entire story. Feel free to check that out at your own leisure. Yes, it does appear that Nick Calandra emailed Smash JT and very nicely, sort of broishly, kind of like, hey man, you know, I'm actually not all that bad, like they say. I really hope you'll consider what I'm saying about myself here because I feel like I'm being misrepresented. You know how it is, buddy, right? And Smash JT, being a nice guy, listened and took that into consideration gave Nick Calandra the benefit of the doubt and removed him from the list. Unfortunately, it was only then that Nick Calandra 
twisted his arm a bit and said, well, you're going to have to remove the whole list too, though, right? Because what if something happens to someone? What if someone gets attacked from you exposing all this information? I mean, what's going to happen? It's going to be on you. Even though all of that information is available on their Twitter accounts and everybody knows who these people are anyway, at best, Smash JT just gave us a quick little shorthand to remember everything they've done because it's getting kind of hard to remember everything they've done because they've done so much. Anyway, Calandra didn't take very kindly to Smash JT, you know, politely rebuking him and telling him, no, I'm not going to take down my list. I'll take you off it because you've convinced me that you don't deserve to be on there. Although that, of course, was a sack of lies as well. And uh, the list stands, but uh, apparently that wasn't enough. So what happened was uh, Nick Calandra then went ahead and got all of his little monkeys from his... Uh, Discord server to fly off my pretties. Fly off and false flag the website. Yes, of course, uh, false flagging a website to Wix claiming harassment, which of course is impossible for it to be. It is, after all, basically just a database of information that is already available elsewhere. He's just collating it, effectively. No different than uh, Alyssa Macante making a list of all of us YouTubers that she doesn't like. Are we freaking out? No, we're celebrating it. <laughs> I mean, you know, fair enough. Anyway, uh, unfortunately, the false flagging did work, and SmashJT.com turned into this. A Wix page that says this domain isn't connected to a website yet. How very, very unfortunate. But we will be back to this in a little while. It went on from there. Alyssa McCante, of course, and other people decided to dance on the grave of SmashJT's website. Alyssa... Macante, I mean, what else can I possibly say about this woman that I haven't already said? She's batshit insane. She's a freaking slag. She's a harpy. She crows on about injustice while creating tons of it herself. A uh, huge shout out to Nick Jane Cowell, who reached out to Wix about this site and consistently followed up. Oh, for God's sake, it's unbelievable, Alyssa. You actually managed to spell the word consistently, despite not having a very good grasp of English. Psychological and psychic mean different things, bitch. Clearly they agree that he was engaging in targeted harassment, among other things. No, they didn't. They didn't believe that. It was just Memorial Day weekend, and they had plenty of things that they needed to be doing, and didn't have time to be answering this, and so, in the interest of potentially stopping something harmful, which is their responsibility, they took the site down. Until such time as they could actually properly weigh up what is going on, and decide how to permanently act. Here, of course, is Jessica Cogswell, who you may remember from a recent uh, SJW bingo video that I did. She has full-blown SJW bingo. She has all of it. Every single facet of it, from attacking white people to gamers to everything else, you know, to being fat, you know, everything like that. Uh, she says, this rules. Uh, I'm so happy and proud of you, babe. Yeah, you're so proud to be taking a man's livelihood, to be taking food off his children's table. You disgust me. Anyway, it goes on from there. I decided to shout this out, of course, as well. I pointed out that making lists of public figures who you disagree with on your website is not harassment, Wix. The person who incited this is organizing users to attack this website, a man's livelihood over a vendetta, and that, in fact is harassment. Of course, then people decide to have a go at me like this absolute muppet retard who tells me I got a stupid fucking take to shut my mouth and get off the internet. I told him that he's completely wrong and, you know, if he's actually convinced that he's right, then he's beyond sense and might be happier as a worm. And told me to, uh, I thought I told you to shut the fuck up. Yeah, well, apparently I didn't, so I guess you don't have any power here, buddy. Anyway, this uh, tweet did very well and was shared lots and lots of times, liked lots and lots of times, and quote tweeted lots and lots of times, so that's very nice. But it wasn't until more recently when Wix decided that it was time for them to get back to work and reach out to Smash JT, explaining that his site was disabled due to a privacy violation uh, and not allowed to display information of any private individual without their prior consent. That's fair enough, and that is a good rule, one that should absolutely stand. Unfortunately, that's not actually what Smash JT did, as we've already pointed out. Everything he put on his site was public information, released by the people themselves, and actually also available on the About Us page of Kotaku. Even we were tweeting joke versions of that, basically saying, why is Kotaku harassing itself? Anyway, yeah. Alyssa, you know, of course, there's another, that's another picture of her deciding to rub salt in the wound. And here is a response from JT to Wix. He points out that he spent years using it as a place for work. 
years, literally like four or five years. Uh, he has been publishing articles to this website, consistently trying to build it up and build it up and build it up. That's dedication. That is the kind of grind and hard work that a YouTuber completely can understand. So fair enough. Um, he points out the images are from their public accounts. There's nothing illegal or illegitimate about it. It's only a way for people to know what video games were worked on and by who. He was getting threats from a few prominent individuals on Twitter. They didn't like the site and were ordering their followers to mass report and get together to get it taken down. This is unacceptable. Without any kind of conversation or dialogue with me, first discussing what, if any, specifics you desire to be changed or updated, and just simply taking the word from a massive attack of people attempting to silence me. He ain't impressed. And fair enough. A man must stand his ground. That's absolutely right. He says, please put the site back up as it does not violate any terms of use. This was clearly a misunderstanding. I've spent years on this site putting it all together as a source of uh, as, as a source of information, not misinformation. Wow, how they've got that into my brain now. For gamers, thank you. And I've, yeah, well, I'm pretty sure you probably know his real name. Uh, it's not like he's exactly tried to hide it, but in the interest of not getting accused of doxing my friend, I decided to omit his name. So there you go. Um, this video is, as predicted, getting very long, but Nick Calandra's not done taking action. He said last night, these guys picked a fight with me. Yeah, we did. I'm picking a fight with you. If you want to fight, get a plane to the Philippines. Um, if you've been targeted by them, feel free to reach out. Yeah, you definitely want to bring consequences for people who disagree with you. You can't. Go ahead. Try to sue us. Try. You don't have a case. You can't have a case. You'll be laughed out of court. Imbecile. Anyway. Gigabear here with a nice little joke version of this at the end. We're suing the internet. We have retained the elite New York NYC law firm Johnson and Ligma. We're coming for you, all of you. Like to Grum's tweet, you're getting served papers. Followed him or Gigabear, law enforcement has been alerted. Actually replied to either of those fascists and agreed with them, police report filed. The days of you Gamergate chads harassing us by reposting what we said on the internet are over. You, you hear me? Don't even think about having a website ever again, poosies. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to go find all your significant others to tell them all about how you're harassing us. And that is about the size of it. But as I pointed out, this does in fact have a very happy ending. And you will see right here if I refresh the page, smashjt.com is back, baby. That's right. And we can go straight back to the Kotaku Detected page where you will find Carolyn Petit, Alyssa McCante, Kenneth Shepard, David Smith, Cecilia D'Anastasio, Levi Winslow, Luke Plunkett, Gita Jackson, Hayes Madsen. Jeff Grubb, Anita Sarkeesian, Jake Steinberg, Emmy Speens, Kim Belair, Chris Kindred, Jeffrey Russo, Danny Lolanders, Mary Kenny, Ashley Cooper, Ash Parrish, Ma Maya Felix Kramer, Megan, not even going to try, Jules Hardy, and the rat fink lying cuck himself, Mr. Nick Calandra. Calm as a bitch, payback's a bitch, support this. If you know about this story and you are a YouTuber, please cover it. It needs the signal boost. I'll be back with more on this story and maybe a deeper dive into this at another time. But in the meantime, please let me know how you feel about all this in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like the video if you've enjoyed it and subscribe to Will of the Fans for more of me. I'd like to see more of you. I'll be back with another video for you very, very soon. But until then, remember to question everything, respect the fans, and I'll chat to you next time.